Welcome to Longmont Voices and Vision, a project of Longmont Public Media. In the midst of the darkest period in our lives, when we're bombarded 24 hours a day with news of the coronavirus and the human and economic carnage it's causing in our society, we're challenged to cope with our fears and anxieties while remaining hopeful about what lies on the other side of this crisis. This project presents an opportunity for Longmont residents to share with others how they're adjusting to new realities of social distancing and the kind of future they hope to experience on the other side of the crisis. I'm Tim Waters, host of these conversations and a Longmont Public Media volunteer. In this series, I'll be asking Longmont residents, many of them your friends and neighbors, three questions. What are you doing to get through this crisis? Even though we cannot be together right now, how are we staying connected to friends and families? And what's the future you are hoping to see and experience on the other side of this crisis? I hope you'll stay with this series and enjoy listening to your friends and neighbors and learn from them how they're getting through and what they're looking forward to in a new reality on the other side. Jessica Erickson, thank you for lending your voice and your vision to this project. Uh, to get started, uh, let's learn a little bit about you. Tell us about Jessica Erickson. Sure, and first I'll say thank you for including me. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this project and, and to see what others have to say uh, as well. Uh, I am President and CEO of Longmont Economic Development Partnership. We're a public-private nonprofit economic development organization. So we're the primary agent for economic development for the city, which in, under nor normal circumstances includes attracting new business investment to our community and helping our existing industry base stay here and grow here and thrive here um, in the city of Longmont. Um, we've shifted gears a little bit, which I'm sure we'll, I'll um, talk about a little bit more in, in other answers, but um, uh, to address some of the needs of our businesses relative to uh, the COVID-19 um, crisis that we're in the midst of today. Um, I have been doing economic development in this area for going on 20 years, and I have to say have never experienced anything like this, though we've been through some, some down times before, and so some comparable experiences that can hopefully bring to the table. Well, I, I would venture to guess that no one has experienced anything like we're experiencing now in anyone's yeah. lifetime at any point in history. So absolutely given the realities of the of the the physical distance we're maintaining from one another and in all the constraints on how we spend our days how are you getting yourself and your family through this sure so we actually had the amazing fortune of having a baby on march 12th our little grace thank you so much um, so there are worse ways to spend a, a pandemic if you have to be in the midst of a pandemic than spending uh, your time snuggling with and smelling a newborn baby. And um, so that's been a pretty big distraction, I think, for us at home um, from everything that goes on um, or that's been going on at, outside of our home. We, uh, um, my fiance is an essential worker working in the construction industry. So he's been the one going out and about into the universe. And I've been staying at home with the little one for, for the most part. And that's worked well um, for us. We have a 14 year old as well. Um, who we've been trying to support through the new world of online schooling. And so that's taken up some of our time. And then I have just in the last week really started to re-engage with the work that we do here at Longmont Economic Development Partnership. It became more and more difficult over time to sit on the sidelines and not be a part of um, the, the solution or be a part of being a resource to our business community. And um, I have to say I take a great deal of comfort in the ability to contribute to meaningful work, um, both outside of this crisis as well as inside of this crisis to support uh, recovery for our community. And so that's um, knowing that I have that, hopefully to come back to and um, to at least engage in on some level today um, provides me with comfort that I'm doing something to contribute to um, the ultimate solution and recovery from this. So in a, in a moment in history where social distancing, right, physical isolation and separation is the kind of the norm or the mm -hmm. expectation, uh, what are you doing to stay connected to family and friends as we go through this 
So um, Zoom, I've <laughs> been using, and not to promote Zoom over anything else, but using Zoom a lot um, and uh, doing, you know, I have a number of friends in Denver that I haven't been able to see. Um, and so doing some online happy hours and um, just some creative things like that. I have texted and talked to by phone my mother and my sisters more than I think I ever had before because um, we're all stuck at home with nothing better to do. So that's been really good to, I think I'm more connected to them um, throughout all of this and, and sending baby pictures to, uh, to them as well pretty constantly. Um, and then social media, um, have uh, spent more time than I typically would on, um, in particular, Facebook, which, you know, has its good points and its bad points, but um, it's helped me to stay connected, especially with this community, um, because uh, it's been oddly a lot easier to stay connected to my remote family and friends than I really feel like I'm staying connected and engaged within this community. So social media platforms have helped with that. Yeah. So uh, it's safe to assume, and from at least my perspective, that on the other side of this pandemic, whatever was normal, right, whatever our routines were and what we thought of as normal, likely to be different on the other mm -hmm. side of this. Whatever the new normal is, yeah. uh, we get a chance to help kind of create going forward. Mm -hmm. So the third question is for you. What's the preferred future? What would you like to experience, see, feel, right, in the new normal? Yeah, and I think um, there's a lot about the existing normal that wasn't working, right? I mean, a lot of the work that we've been doing is to try and, and especially some of the stuff that we've been doing together has been to try and address um, some of the things that weren't working with the existing normal. And so certainly um, identifying those things um, and um, hopefully addressing them in a different way, I think as with any crisis, but more so now than I've ever seen before, um, we're seeing the, both the best of people and the worst of people. And so hopefully the best of people, you know, wins out and the, the worst of people dies out and we come together collectively to recognize that, um, you know, what we've experienced over the last month and what we'll experience over the last several months has given us pause to recognize some of those things weren't working in the existing normal and um, create an environment where um, we can start to get those things working again, whether it be affordable housing, homelessness, um, student loan debt, a variety of things that just weren't working um, before. And we've now had the opportunity to take pause and, um, and consider how we make them work in the new normal. As I mentioned, new baby, which has become kind of the singular lens and singular motivation through which I look at some of these things and wanting to create um, an opportunity, an environment, a community here, a global community where she has the same opportunities for prosperity that I feel like I have had all of my life and the direction we were going those things um, was not going to guarantee her those. Um, and so outside of anything that happens with, you know, the public health crisis that we're facing, um, coming out of that, giving her the opportunity to, as we've discussed, have the best possible, um, possible life and hopefully conversations will be created coming out of this that allow for that, encourage that, that give us all the opportunity to collectively participate in that. Parenthood seems to reframe one's absolutely. perspective in fundamental yes. ways. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much for lending your voice and vision to this, and thanks for your great work in the community. Take care You're of yourself. Welcome. Thank you again for your family. Coming. Stay safe and healthy. I appreciate that, and you too. Dan Gust, uh, welcome to Longmont Voices and Vision. Thank you. And thank you for your contributions to this project. Uh, each of these interviews, we've started by learning a little bit about who's being interviewed. So tell us about you, uh, what you do in Longmont. You're, you're in this conversation as a member of leader in our business community. So talk about who you are and what you do, and then we'll get into these questions. Well, I'm, my, my back, background brought me to Longmont in, in high tech. And back in the oh, around 1990, the High tech business that I was in uh, kind of had a, oh, I'd call it a fairly severe hiccup. And I decided that I had been in the ups and downs of high tech and other businesses working with and in other corporations for long enough, and I was going to go to work for myself. And so I uh, bought a hardware store, then I bought another hardware store, and then we opened a hardware store, and then we bought another one. Eventually, it all turned out to be 
uh, our business on North Main, 17th and Main, uh, Ace Hardware Longmont, which uh, has been around now under our ownership for 30 years and been around since that shopping center existed in the late 60s. So that's my business. Uh, our daughter owns that business now, though my wife and I are still involved fairly deeply in it, just helping and making sure things go, go well, extra hands, so to speak. I've uh, been involved in the community for as long as I can remember. Um, my parents always stressed to us that we gave back. You have to give back. And I've uh, been involved in the Chamber of Commerce. I sit on the Y board. I've uh, been chair of the hospital board. I've been chairing for almost 30 years. And so I've, I've been involved in, in many things. Now uh, I'm winding down a little bit in my partial retirement, but uh, still sit on the Longmont Economic Development Partnership Board and Bank Board here in town. So I've been involved in, in lots of things in Longmont, lots of people in Longmont, and that's kind of a very short short bio of, of me. There's a lot more in there, but uh, I won't bore you with it now. Well, nothing's boring about that story. And anybody who knows Ace Hardware on 17th and Main knows not only what a great uh, retail resource that is, but what a great corporate citizen uh, Ace Hardware is. Thanks. So uh, thanks for all those contributions. I know one of my one of our favorite stops uh, on a regular basis my wife, for my wife and I. So, you know, I'm going to ask uh, three questions. Uh, the first of these three questions is, in this time of at least unprecedented in any of our lifetimes, I think, the kind of uh, social, physical distancing or separation and social distancing we're experiencing. What are you doing to get through this period of time? Well, uh, our, our main business, the, uh, the Ace Hardware Store, is deemed an essential business. So that business is open and running. And uh, because we've had a lot of people choose not to come into work because they have risk factors of, and age and so forth, uh, I've kind of been called in to do a few more things maybe than I normally would. Uh, so I get out of the house maybe more than somebody who was totally uh, socially distanced. Um, so that my life has changed a little bit in that way, maybe a little more active in the business than I would might normally have been. Of course, I was trying to wear a mask. I'm also in a, uh, a healthy but in age-related risk group, as you can as you can probably you tell. and I both. Yeah. Uh, so we're careful on the show, so social distancing and wearing the masks and so forth. Um, flip side of that, our downtown business, the kitchen store at uh, uh, 464 Main, we closed that early because everything downtown closed. Bars, restaurants, uh, other retailers downtown, uh, the traffic just dwindled down to nothing in a matter of about four or five days and it just didn't make sense for our daughter who owns the business to keep that open and it's a sad situation we're worried about whether or not and how that will reopen along with all the businesses on main street uh, it seems like the core of our town has been affected more than almost any other part of of the city. I mean, a lot of the city has been affected, but uh, to drive down Main Street, you could, uh, uh, don't want to be flipped, but you could fire a cannon down Main Street lately and not hit anybody. Uh, and that's a sad, sad situation. I never thought I'd see this. Never been in a situation, like you said, I've never been in a situation where I, I would have even imagined that the entire, you know, percentage of the economy had been shut down and particularly all of our uh, retailers restaurants uh, brewery distilleries uh, and a lot of our manufacturing had been shut down it's just it's just crazy so but personally it has because I'm semi-retired it hasn't affected my life a lot uh, I've worked a few more crossword puzzles and done a few more things at home uh, instead of going out and out for coffee and more of those sorts of things but Karen and I are, are, are doing fine and not haven't gotten too stir crazy yet. Uh, so in this time of stay at home orders and with essential businesses and, and you've explained obviously that, that you're not stuck at home 24 seven, but we are in a time where we're disconnected from family and friends in ways that we haven't been in the past. 
how are you staying connected with, with those people, family and friends? Probably spend more time on Facebook than normal. And, and uh, I have family in South Dakota. I have family in New Mexico. I have a lot of family here in Longmont. Uh, but my brother and I haven't gone for a cup of coffee in a couple of weeks. Um, that's pretty strange. Uh, but everybody kind of keeps track of each other, you know, via Facebook or phone calls. And But uh, uh, social media is about the best way I have found to do it, or a phone call occasionally, but social media is more immediate. And it, and it works well, and it's kind of personal, but it's not personal in the way that we really, we all really like, uh, at least not that I like. So, yeah. Uh, We're all learning how to use Zoom. And... <laughs> More conferences, um, yeah. you know, our, our, our bank uses go to meeting. And so I just before this, kind of, I was on a conference call uh, with the bank you know, on go to meeting. So yeah. there's not much difference in the two of them. Yeah. Dan, the, uh, the last question, there's a presumption that underlies it that whatever normal looks like on the far side of this pandemic, you know, once we're out from underneath the stay at home order and and we start to re-engage with one another, whatever the new normal is, it's fair to assume, I think that life is gonna be different, at least for a while. So the question is for you, what would you like to see in the new normal? What's your preferred future? And what, what kind of a future would you like to help create as one of our business leaders? Well, uh, I think this whole situation has reminded all of us just how precious our local economy is. Uh, not to the people who are in business as much as it is to the people who are in the community. And if we don't figure out a way down the road as we go through this to uh, support these local people, it's gonna be a semi ghost town around here. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little biased because of uh, the local nature of our business against uh, the Amazons of the world, though I'm an Amazon customer, but we can't get to the point where we're using that to the exclusion of anything that we can do uh, locally. Uh, and without, without, without business, uh, you won't have the people like Ace Hardware or any of the other retailers and uh, service businesses in town that support things like the Hour Center or Safe Shelter or uh, any of the, the, the YMCA, the wonderful nonprofits that we have, uh, your big businesses and your businesses not related to town geographically just aren't doing that. They don't do that. They won't do that. Um, so. I would love to see going forward a way that our business community could do a better job of trying to focus everyone on the local business. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need to continue with our efforts to bring uh, primary employers to town. We have to do that. I mean, that's where the money comes from. If you don't have primary employers, you don't have money coming into town. But to figure out how to get those people to understand that being in this town gives them a certain responsibility to support the town. I guess that's that's what I that's going to become. It's always been important, but it's going to become far far more important as we go forward. Uh, just walk up and down either side of Main Street, and and you, and you can see that you can say, well, is that guy going to survive, or is that guy going to survive, or uh, we've got to do whatever we have to do to make them survive. Uh, federal government's done a little bit, but for most of these pet people, it, it hasn't done a fraction of what it's going to take to keep them healthy. Um, and, and that's what I'd really like to see. I, some of these people are my friends or my acquaintances. I, I would hate to see them go away. It's just part and parcel of the, uh, of the real value of our community, I think. So that's, that's what I would like is, is a bigger emphasis on, on local. Dan, that sounds to me like a call to action. Uh, and uh, we need to listen thoughtfully and carefully and respond appropriately. So 
uh, thanks for that. Thanks for your contribution to this project. Uh, keep yourself and your family safe, and it'll be it'll be fun to re-engage when we're out from underneath this out from underneath the uh, stay-at-home order uh, when we all could be in the same room again. We'll go have a cup of coffee. All right, thanks, sir. Very good. Thank Take you. care. Eric Wallace, thank you for your willingness to participate in the Longmont Voices and Vision Project. Each of these interviews uh, get started with learning something about who's being interviewed. So tell us about you. Well, my name is Eric Wallace. I'm the co-founder and president of Left Hand Brewing Company here in Longmont. We started in 1993, and this was my next jump after a, a career uh, not a, I didn't get to retirement, but a career in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force for 12 and a half years, um, mostly serving in Europe and Southwest Asia. And before that, I was an Air Force brat. So I've grown up all over the world, and Longmont is my declared hometown since I moved 19 times <laughs> until I ended up here. All right. Well, you know, these interviews um, really kind of, uh, are made up of three questions or responses to three questions. Uh, the first of those questions is, um, in the midst of an unprecedented moment in time when uh, we are physical distance and, and social, uh, physical isolation and social distance create kind of unique challenges for us, how are you getting through uh, this period of time with this crisis? Well, as a, as a brewer, um, obviously, this, we're, we're amongst the, the majority of companies that are being significantly impacted. Um, since in most of our markets, we're, we're a nationally distributed brand. Left Hand is in 46 states. So most of our restaurant and bar customers are completely or almost completely closed down. So uh, a third of our business there is, is gone right now. Our tasting room is limited to just um, takeout. You know, we're doing curbside pickup and delivery. So we're doing a, a fraction of our normal business there. Um, but we are also a manufacturer and we are an essential business. We provide um, beer into the, into the food supply. My business card for 26 years has said, beer is food on it. It still does. And we're making food out of grain and hops and other ingredients. And, um, so we're we're basically running at a limited capacity, but we're running, uh, we are running. We're running two shifts in production as needed. Um, since sales are way down, we're trying to get our inventory back into balance. I've got 17 of 23 salespeople furloughed currently, or 15, 15 of them furloughed currently because they can't work with stores, they can't work with bars, they can't work with restaurants, they can't work with distributor reps. Um, so they're on the sidelines right now. We've got a couple of other people um, that are full-time furloughed and then a whole slew of brewery people are working on partial hours because um, we're limiting hours in a, in a number of different ways and we're limiting production. And then everybody in the company who's pulling any hours is working at a 25% pay reduction right now. So the majority of my people are eligible for some kind of unemployment benefit partial or, or full, um, plus the supplemental, plus the majority of them will also be getting this $1,200 supplemental check from the government either this week or at the end of the year or whenever in between it gets it. Wow, a few challenges, I'd say. So yeah, we're, we're probably uh, running, we're, our goal is to run at half of payroll because our, we're, we budgeted half of expected sales. Hopefully we'll be able to beat that a little bit and, and every week it's changing. I mean, the rules are changing, the programs are changing, the reality is changing. So we're meeting frequently um, to adapt to those changes and try to make the best decisions based on the, the data that we have available as it comes to us. Well, with adaptation in mind, uh, in this time of, of uh, distancing and, and stay at home orders, how are you staying connected to your family and friends? Well, I've got one son living here. I've got a daughter who works at the brewery living in Firestone. And I've got a daughter who just graduated C last year um, living with relatives in Italy. 
Um, and then I got a brother in Armenia. I got a, a brother who, when he's not at sea, he's a merchant marine in Texas, and a sister and her family in Washington, and my folks in Las Vegas. So we, you know, family-wise, we have a, a family Zoom call Sunday afternoons here, trying to time it so that it's not ridiculously late in Armenia and it's it's late night it's night time in in Italy. So we're using a lot of Zoom. Um, from a work standpoint, we're doing a lot of teams, a lot of team meetings um, where you can share screens and you just pop onto your, you, you talk to people through your computer. Um, a, lot more, a lot more cell phone calls, text, emails, everything, everything that you can, but, but getting, getting your teams together and at least talking face to face several times a day and checking up on status and getting, getting help on things that we need. And we're doing, weekly all hands basically zoom calls on friday afternoons at the end of the week basically to update everybody that we've got whether they're part-time full-time furloughed or whatever so that they can stay up to date on the latest that we can figure out what's going on and <laughs> try to try to give them all the information we can we're, we're a super transparent open book company anyway but trying to keep everybody in the loop and keep everyone feeling connected because right now isolation is, is a big concern and we're really focused on people's mental health as well as their financial well-being. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I think safe to assume that uh, whatever, whatever the new normal is on the other side of this life will be different in some ways. So the third question in these interviews is what would you like to see? Uh, assuming that whatever will settle into a new normal and we're going to help or be in a, in a position to help create some of that new normal. What do you want to see and what do you want to help create as the new normal on the other side of this pandemic? Well, one of our, one of the, the most beautiful things I think that, that we've been able to contribute to doing what we do, brewing, brewing and selling beer, is build, building community and We've been really explicit with our people that is right now it is our duty to be operating as normally as we can in a safe way so that we are strong and that we're going to survive because this is going to be a, we think this is going well into next year. Um, and even then we think it's going to be a long slog years timeline, not months, the slog out of the depression that's likely going to result from this complete breaking action on on our economy on such a such a wide scale people are going to be hesitant to come out like they used to be um people are going to be financially impacted in all variety of ways um, and i think our biggest focus is going to be how do we get how do we return to as close as we can to previous level of business and how do we help bring a sense of decency and civility and working together, you know, to, to, to help everybody get back on steady, a steady, steady footing, you know, our tasting room, we've always looked at as long monster living room. You know, it's like, this is where a diverse group of people come together intermingle, you know, talk throughout, throughout the day at the end of their work day and where we're able to then, you know, use that basic group of people to set the, create the volunteer force that we then use in our big fundraisers that we do for, throughout the year in the community. We also have a project going on right now that actually it's great to have a really a focus on, on something that engage some of the people that might not otherwise we're putting together our, our new um, tasting room and restaurant down in Curtis Park in downtown Denver. So we, that's a large space and we're hoping that that also will be opening, hopefully as the, the limitations come off of businesses able to operate. It's a big space, even if we're limited in to quarter or half capacity, that we'll be able to actually start bringing people out of their homes and getting back together and trying to work to, to rebuild the, the community, you know, the, the social community, the, the public community 
after however many months we're going to end up, you know, sitting in our, our homes. Yeah. Well, those are, uh, those are noble aspirations and we appreciate the fact that you're thinking about them and pursuing them. So thank you again, Eric Wallace, for your contribution to the Longmont Voices and Vision Project. Take care of yourself, your family, and all those folks who are working for you. Thank you. We're doing our best. All right.